Okay, I'm going to do a new video. I've got a new way of uh, doing a screenshot now. And so I did a video uh, several years ago of how to use the Garmin uh, devices to do geocaching. And I've actually decided I'm going to make a new one here just to be a little more descriptive and have a little better clarity about how you, how do you the process of taking the uh, GPX files from your um, from your email that you get from Groundspeak from your pocket quarries and then actually inputting them into your GPS and I'm right here for example I'm using the uh, 62s and the 64s this can be done with the Dakotas uh, the Montanas uh, the Oregon's and I'm not sure about the new 66 that's coming out, but I believe it'll be a similar method on that. So just showing you how to how that works. Okay, I'm going to show you how to put your um, GPX files that you might save in your pocket quarries. And so I'm going through here, and you see this is the old format, and um, I'm going to go on and show you the newer format in putting. Uh, getting to your pocket quarries and this is the new format here um, on when you go into your pocket quarries you'll see that these are some I've created in the past and that I'm going to I'm going to use this here this is my one I use all the time in my local area it's a uh, 60 mile radius of my my hometown and so that's the one I'm normally going to use and I'll I'll show you how I get that through an email. At this point I open up my email and you can see I click on my turtle soup where I keep all my stuff here and you'll see I have a this file here. And that's at 60 R radius. So I click on here and you'll see it. I go to download that file. And when I download it, I have a place saved on my computer. It's uh, under my GPS. You'll see I'll save it here under GPS. And on the desktop and under Waymarks. So I'll click on that one here. And that'll decompress that. That way my GPS will pick that up and it also asked me do you want to overwrite existing file in my case because I already have a file in there the same name and I say yes okay then we click out of here and I'll show you how that works at this point I've picked this file here I named GPS and that's where I have my stuff at I click on that I get the uh, way marks is where I put them and you'll see I've got quite a few way marks there but I want to click on the one here that's that we just downloaded from the email and we will see there's two of them in here one of them is the smaller file which is actually your parking coordinates and then we want to pick the bigger file the larger file you can make those coordinates if you want to put those parking coordinates in there that's fine too but in this case we'll just go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, cut that and back up and then we're going to paste it in this field here and it's going to ask us, it's going to say you already have a duplicate because I've already got one in there. So you say yes and then you go ahead and uh, it'll now, you know, put that in there. And what that does is decompresses it and it's ready for our GPS at this point. So we need to, to do that step in order to do that. We could have done that with other file too. But now we've got the, um, got this open here and we're going to go our GPS is already open so we're going to head open that up and open this Garmin file here and then under uh, GPX I'm going to open that up and then you'll see there's the old one file in there from my pad at this point I have both windows open one of them being the GPS and I'll pick this file here I'll copy or actually I'll cut it, I'll just grab it and drag it over and then it says replacing the destination basically it's asking me to overwrite the one that's already in there which you won't do that if that's the first time but I keep it in there like that so okay then at this point it's in your actually in your GPS 
and you're ready to go. Okay, <clears throat> just showing you some examples of uh, what you should do when you go out and you find a geocache. Um, we've already loaded this up with uh, with uh, the local area with G uh, geocaches in the local area, and so we. I've showed you how to do that, so what I'm going to do now is show you when you go out to find a cache. We'll use this one here with a better backlight. So anyway, let's go here. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and find this little cache right here. Let's just say we're looking for this cache. And we're going to click on that actually click on the actual icon on there and hit enter and you'll see it pop up at the top or you should yeah okay there's the cache okay at this point we'll hit go and depending on how you got set up this sometimes reverts to the compass and you can also go back over here and then come back and it'll actually go I've got it set up for the map so there's the map there. So let's say you get ready to find that. Once you get in here and you menu around, you'll see where you can hit, actually hit found here. You want to hit that button when you, because uh, that way it stores it in your phone. And then it says find the nearest cat, nearest next closest. So I'll hit that, or you can just cancel out of that. And then I'll show you how that works. Okay, like I was showing you earlier. If you logged it and hit that found button, what you can also do, it makes it nice because you can go through here and uh, page through to the main menu. And what it does, it keeps a running count. You can go down here to calendar and hit, hit enter. And if you notice, it'll say one of one geocache is found on that date. Now if I click, obviously yesterday it says I didn't find any caches yesterday so this is good if you're going on a trip and you don't really want to log your caches in right away you can come back and and when you hit that button it'll tell you the actual GC number of that particular cache you found that day so that's a nice feature that keeps it in your GPS if you're just going to keep track of those as you go along and you don't want to have to write it in a notepad or anything now, once I go back to the computer and hook it up, I'll show you how that appears uh, on a computer. Another thing I want to show you on here is that when you're logging these caches, let's just say we're going to log this one. We're going to hit our menu button here, and we're going to hit found. If you notice when this pops up, you'll see it says... Uh, several things you can do. You can say done or you can find the next or you can actually put a comment in here. Now this comes in handy when you're doing an earth cache because you can kind of put the details in here. Of course it's a lot of typing you have to do. You can put the details or you can just put a note in here and what I'm going to do on this particular cache I'm just going to put um, hard to find. I'm just put well I'm just going to put hard. That way I'll know when I log it I'll have something to go by. I'm just going to put hard. And then we go down here and hit done. And so that's going to log that in there. And we go find the next closest. So we'll shut that down and we'll show you what it looks like when you get on the computer. Okay, what I have here is... I uh, saved some time. I went ahead and plugged in the GPS and you'll see that there's two windows because I have a card in mine. So we have to figure out which one's the one with the card. So we'll click on this one and we'll see. Yeah, that's the one with the card. So we'll delete that one or just get out, exit out. Hit the Garmin here. And then you'll see there's the GPX file that we messed with before. And we can just look at it real quick and then we can get on out of there and this this is not what we're looking for this time we're looking for GPS visits or, or actually it's uh, geocache visits and it, we want the one with the lines on it you'll see the one there's one there with lines and there's several without you want that one there with lines so you click on that one let's see here okay 
and then you'll notice there's our, our text logs those are the logs that we put in there we have the G, uh, GC numbers and it has found it and then you'll actually notice it actually says hard on this one here that's where we put that note in there so that's just to take a look at what it looks like on there so now we'll we're going to go into the geocaching website here let's see here uh, all right so we're opening it up now into the geocaching website we're in the old or the new format and like i say i like that old format and like i say you just have to look around for these two different ways of finding it and like I say uh you'll see the drafts up here at the top on this one here the, yep and then now if we go down and go to the new style it's down the page on the left hand side just a little bit here let's see okay yeah there it is and then uh click on that and uh this says it doesn't have anything in it right now we're plugged in but we haven't loaded those in so we have to find those and get them connected to geocaching so we click on upload and we're looking for uh there we go we're looking for the garmin and i'm on a little fast here but and then we want to hit these visits see you'll show it only shows up here as one so geocache visits and then it automatically loads those into your geocaching page and what's nice now is if it's it's in there it's under geocaching.com and you can click out of here you can disconnect your gps and it's always going to keep that information in there and i'll show you what that looks like when you click back to your profile this is the new format here and um let's see i gotta look around a little bit more but you'll see over on the left hand side you see it says two drafts so it's waiting for us to log those caches now go back to the old style and you'll notice it's over here on the right here it's that little dot it says two drafts awaiting so we'll we'll take it from the new one and uh we'll click on that and then there there they are okay so if you click on this it's ready to load in load your login so you click on that and then here you go it always come up as found it to start off but you have other options you have you did not did not find or write a note but it always reverts to that so there's your format for putting that information in there for your log and then you can go down the page if you want and go ahead and drop coins if you had some coins to drop off in there you also have that you can add favorites you can actually drop your photos in there if you want to go with the photo put a photo onto your log and then we'll click out of that and then we'll look at this one here you'll see uh on this one here you'll notice that it actually says hard there that actually posted that little note we put in there so and we'll you know sit there and see how it has that hard wrote in there and then like I say when we click on the actual uh, log it'll actually put that into our field and we don't want to keep that in there unless that's something we we, we want to keep in like I say you can actually type your log in that way if you want but it's just hard with all the things but that we want to go ahead and delete that and uh, just write in our log here and that would also work good for an earth cache too you can you could write in an earth cache and put your information and you'd have the information but then you can delete it and then send it to the owner of the cache so there we go and we can give it a favorite if we want and uh, we hit post which I'm not going to now because I haven't actually logged this cache so I'm just going to back out of it there you go and uh, and as we do that it will delete all these logs in these drafts and like I say I just went ahead and deleted them now just to keep mine clean but um, that's pretty much it we want, I wanted to show you how to log these in if like I say if you have questions or comments please please put in your log uh, and just like I say this is a simpler way to do it and it's if you know how to do this and you can slow this video down if you need to